as they get right to the end, and when it pitches over, they're looking right at the edge of a crater. Had he landed where the computer was taking him, they'd still been up there today because they couldn't have taken off from the sloping edge of that crater. So he took over manually, and then all of a sudden you hear five forward, 10 forward. Now you're also gonna hear a 30 second call. That's how much fuel they got left. Four forward, drift into the right a little. Down a half, 30 second forward. So they knew things weren't going the way they were supposed to go. And when they finally got down, he had, I think he had eight seconds of fuel left. Tranquility base here, the Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again, thanks a lot. You know, Gene Kranz, who was on the console, right after that communication by the Capcom that said, we're, we're breathing again, said, okay, controllers, I'm gonna give you 15 seconds to cheer. I don't want you back at work. <laughs> when I got there, they put me in trajectory. I was there for probably six months, and then they hired a gentleman, Bill Wallenhop. He was one of the few people in the free world that had experience doing lunar navigation. And they picked about five of us to go under him, so I became a navigator. We were doing orbit determination. We have a giant computer program which takes all the tracking data in for an orbit, processes it, and, and out comes a uh, state vector, which is the definition of, of the orbit. Once you've got that state vector, how do you predict it forward to know where you're going? And that's where the uncertainties start coming in. For about five years, that was my field especially, all the way through the Apollo program. We were bound to determine we were going to get there before the end of the decade. Uh, we were bound to determine we were going to meet the Russians and do anything we had to do to, to get there. The high lasts for a long time. I'm still on the high today. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. I get emotional when I hear that, and uh, I probably will as long as I live. It's almost amazing to think that it's 50 years from when we landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Everybody knew that we were doing something special. I don't know if we knew how special it was, you know, when you think that it's, it's 50 years from then and we haven't been back, but I think we all knew we were involved in something that was, you know, beyond all of us. I think I can safely say Rose didn't teach me hardly anything that I that I used once I got to the space program because they weren't teaching aerospace engineering, they weren't teaching orbital dynamics. I went through the normal physics stuff, math and, and electrical engineering. I didn't like to learn stuff verbatim, I liked to, to derive it. And on those four hour finals I could derive answers to the problems and I loved them. That was the kind of thinking that you needed when you got into a field where there wasn't anything written. Everything we were doing was new, so you had to kind of make your own way. You had to think, you had to reason, and Rose did a fantastic job of teaching me how to do that. I literally reported about a week after my 22nd birthday, and when I did the, some of the most important work, I was 23 or 24. There weren't a lot of other people down there that were 35 or 40 to choose from. So the opportunity for a young engineer was really incredible. And that became obvious real quick because I didn't have a lot of experience. So at the time, I knew I had some opportunities. I didn't realize how great they were. The world doesn't always have the same goals as, as you do. You know, when I got down there, I could have gone ahead and gone to the PhD program and, and I would have been a electrical engineer, probably a professor somewhere. Once I got down there, my gut was saying something different. I kind of totally flipped on what I wanted to do. There's a lot of things I could have done that would have made me more money, but I don't think there's anything I could have done that would have been more satisfying. And that, that would kind of be the advice is get your goals, make sure you got some goals and you know where you want to go, but, but then stay loose.